I'm delighted to introduce the first of three lectures in the Irish Life and Permanent Lecture Series on the subject of disability uh, in contemporary Ireland. And I'm particularly delighted that President Mary McAleese has kindly agreed to deliver the first lecture. Irish Life and Permanent are really pleased to have the opportunity to support the tremendous work of Get Ahead, uh, drawing attention uh, to uh, the challenges faced by people with disabilities uh, and more importantly focusing on people's capabilities and on the positive contribution that every single individual can make to all aspects of life in Ireland today. I hope that you find the lecture series thought-provoking and inspirational. Disability and Contemporary Ireland, which is sponsored by Irish Life and Permanent and is organised by the Get Ahead Committee of AHEAD. AHEAD, as I'm sure you all know, stands for Association for Higher Education Access and Disability, and GET stands for Graduates for Employment and Training. So it is with great pleasure, President, that I invite you to address this assembly on the topic of Disability and Contemporary Ireland. She got you in Oshka, because the love for war or metal for masking you is so hard, even to especially the shock. The girl Mila Mila Mahla has got them falsely fair queen and falsely Kelly don't care the order for a bay. Fear falsely Kelly, my Mila Buikis has got them curl a bay and shock. It's good to be here this morning. Thanks so much for the welcome and for the chance, the chance to be here. It's a joy to be the person who has the privilege of giving the inaugural address for a head, uh, the Association of uh, Higher Education Assets and Disability. Um, and I, I, the concept of Get Ahead, uh, I like very much. Uh, I want to say a very big thank you to John. Um, for the invitation that allows me to be part of this really very, very important, this is the launch of this important debate. AHEAD combines two themes that are very close to my own heart and very close to yours, I know, education and people with disability. Education at its simplest is just, well, it's, it's the doorway to opportunity for every single one of us. It's an open secret that the basic building block of the Celtic Tiger economy was the widening of access to free second level education. And out of that then, the huge demand that that created for third level education. That's the biggest difference between the Ireland we inhabit and the Ireland that our parents inhabited, is access, broad, widespread access to second level and third level education. In our case, in the case of Ireland, of course, we only got that access um, to, to free second level education, universal education, at the end of the 1960s. So it took some time for that, um, that whole opening up, that widening, that harnessing and harvesting of the greatest resource we have, which is the brain power of our people, to kick in. But kick in it did with a vengeance in the 80s and in the 90s. The huge new energy and imagination that were unlocked by that seminal change in Irish life provoked the most remarkable period of achievement in the history of our country, economically, politically, socially, culturally. So many things went into fifth gear after having languished for a long time in first and second gear. 
Ireland, you could say, has gone from darkness to light in little more than a generation. In previous generations, we educated effectively only an elite, a small percentage of our population. And now, with hindsight, we can see there was no mystery about why we only ever realised a small percentage of our potential. The reason is very simple. If you only educate a small part of your population, if you waste the skills, the genius, the talents of all the rest, if you fail to harness them, you can only ever hope, only ever hope, to realise a part, a small part of your potential. That old culture, thank goodness, is now gone. We've gone from darkness to light, and we now have this problem-solving generation par excellence. And they have solved many problems. The problem of outward migration, centuries old, a century and a half of outward migration ended by this problem-solving generation. Poverty, unemployment, all tackled now in very effective ways. Peace in Northern Ireland, tackled in very effective ways with this new imagination, this new confidence. Anyway, it's just as well that they are a problem-solving generation because there are still plenty of problems to be solved. And not least among them is the question of how we ensure that those Irish citizens who are living with disability can move coherently from enduring life with all its many obstacles for them to enjoying life in all its fullness. And we all know, everyone in this room knows without being told, that education is one of the most important keys to answering that question, to solving that problem. But then we hit this little word, this tiny, rather enigmatic little word called access. And it raises very complex issues in the case of people with disability. Because there is a web of attitudes, of practices, of presumptions, of rules, of structures, which make the line from disability to and through education, and especially to and through third level education into the workplace, it makes that line anything but straight. All the way along the line, there are so many doorkeepers. So many people who hold the key to crucial access points. And the disabled have to negotiate and to navigate each one of these in a way that is much more painstaking and much more frustrating than for those without disability. AHEAD is one of the organisations working to straighten that path, along with GET. And it seems to me that this is one of the most extraordinary changes that we have seen in, um, in the world of disability in this generation. The old days of silent stoicism from the disability sector have long, long since metamorphosed, thankfully, into a full volume advocacy, which is slowly but surely replacing the old days of isolation and invisibility. I mean, it's great to hear that certain people on the platform party are considering, they better not be, uh, are considering, are actually going to stand for the Shannon. Um, that's the kind of advocacy, that's the kind, that's the kind of voice. Who can trump? Who can trump that voice? Um, and I want, while I'm here, also to say a very big thank you to John Kelly, because um, John, John's interest in disability and access goes back a very long time. I think our very first discussions about AHEAD go back well over 20 years. Um, and so many times um, over these past number of years, I know that John has been a great champion of the disabled. I think to one simple thing, a number of years ago when um, um, a, a, a colleague or a friend of mine from Gallaudet University in Washington and I were considering how we could set up a Fulbright scholarship for the tiny number of deaf who managed to get into third level and then exit from it, how we could make fourth level uh, more easily available to them. And we came to John with a plan for a Fulbright scholarship. And instantly, instantly the door was opened. And it's just so lovely to meet a doorkeeper who opens the door spontaneously. 
um, and that and has the heart for doing that. And yet we know that so often that that is not the experience of those with disability. They meet the doorkeeper and the process of negotiation and navigation starts that takes a lot of effort. 